Welcome to the channel Tribe. This episode is a part of our webinar series Tribecast. In this episode, we are having Santosh to put talking on the topic getting started in security testing. We'll start off with uh, this webinar. I have done a previous series as well, uh, like Ask Me Anything on the test tribe itself. And thanks to Mahesh that he invited me to do this webinar for people around the globe or people of the test tribe. So the, the main motive of this uh, webinar is uh, not in specific structure or something. So it's more about how we can get started with web security or mobile security or anything in in terms of the security aspect it could be social engineering how to think security and where you can start off with so i have been uh, a hacker since uh, 16 and that was my first hack when i was 16 and it's been like 16 years now uh i'm 34 now so which means it's a half of uh 34 17 16 when i was 16 when i was a kid so i started really i did not go i did not watch any courses or something because there was there were no courses at all when i started all I used to do was okay, chat on Yahoo Messenger and meet some people online and try to learn from them and read a lot of documentation. We always think that, okay, documentation is boring. Well, if you practice reading blogs or reading documentation, it has got great amount of uh, diamonds or gold or anything that's valuable so uh what i would motivate you to do is go on read a lot of blogs watch different videos as well on youtube and get some courses from even youtube i mean sorry udemy or code academy and look into the W3C documentation, which is a worldwide web consortium. Read everything and try to understand it or else it's always the bouncer and everything is hot air. So uh, I also run a company called as work to code a bit of marketing here. So we, uh, work on secure application development and also the exploratory testing services and also the deeper automation. Uh, we, we, we are coders and we are testers and we are engineers in short. Uh, we don't, we, we never segregated ourselves like, okay, I'm a manual tester or something like how the world is screwed up now. Uh, saying that manual testing, because I never found anything like manual. There is no manual programming or there is no, it's, it's, it's the brain that's used in every different profession. So let's move ahead. So super warning, okay, you can just ignore this because it speaks about a dictionary where videos is set to false that's ironic because we are taking the video of this pictures you can take it because you have a print screen on your uh, uh, machine uh, or else you can take a screenshot using the different tools just listening and enjoying that's what i say true this is only if i do something in where I'm present physically and not on webinar. So you can just ignore this super warning. There's no such warning here. So this is what I have been all my life. I have been a great liar, a thief, a physical infrastructure breaker, web application hacker, mobile apps, internet of things. And whenever I used to see the kiosk machine, 
in the malls or supermarket i used to play around with them until the staff used to come and say okay what are you doing and then i would say that okay i'm just playing because i was a kid so people wouldn't catch me so i used to do a social engineering and speaking about social engineering what's act social engineering so it's a manipulating people the humans uh, for your own benefits so you can lie to people or else you can extract information from people by saying something uh, like okay i like you and i'm building a trust on you uh, and then you start trusting me and once you start trusting me okay you would reveal more information compared to uh uh for instance okay if you did not trust me you wouldn't reveal such information so some disclaimer uh you can just ignore this as well because this is only in a conference where uh, i don't share it online it's only physically uh wherever i'm present physically so and the second disclaimer you can uh, this I'm serious about. I'm not, not responsible for how you use this knowledge. Don't mess with me. Uh, I would like to you are responsible for it. So let's move on and this question okay you need to ask this question to yourself how many of you are programmers architects automatons or automators uh, and how many with the hacking experience i believe that uh, you are someone who wants to start security testing and maybe you have done some attacks or maybe you have read about it on uh, new channels where there are different breaches. Every day we get to see many uh, articles on security uh, or data breaches. So what's hacking and what's cracking? You often hear this, uh, these different terms used by your security team or people uh, who run institutes who say that okay we provide trainings okay uh, we provide training for red team blue team now now let's just break all this definition into simple thing now there are bad guys who are trying to hack our software and when i say hack our software it means they are trying to gain access to our data and that's what is important uh, in today's world. So hackers are someone okay, who would hack you. They could uh, uh, do it for their own benefits uh, or for money, or they could do it for uh, just for fun. And we are not here to ask this question saying, oh, let's uh, think about why hackers hacked our application because maybe we don't get to know at all. Uh, we are just uh, thinking about multiple things and we are saying, okay, maybe this, this is why, maybe that is why. But what we need to do is, how do we safeguard ourselves? So that's hacking to me. I think about defensive. And even if you see about red team, red teams are someone in the organization who attack the application and the blue teams focus on, in the same organization, they focus on building a defensive mechanism against those attacks. What's unauthorized access? So even in restaurants, okay, you sometimes you see that, okay, no admission uh, beyond this line, which means it's a kitchen. So you are unauthorized person to get into that uh, space. The same thing, with software as well. Now the software has a different rooms or different features or different roles. 
and what they mean is okay you are unauthorized you're not an authorized person to enter this physical infrastructure or you are not authorized to enter uh, use these kind of features uh, that's where you bring in the permission level access control and uh, different types of access controls there to secure it because your users will trick you and they would use your code however they want to do i mean they can go to developer tools they can change things they can change their roles so that's why security is important because you will never get to know what other people are going to do across the globe with your application now moving on this okay the problems that we are facing in the industry uh, these are the problems that I've been seeing for the uh, last 10 years, and it has not changed. And sometimes I feel frustrated. Uh, I would like to say, yes, I am frustrated, but also I need to take care of my mental health or else I cannot sleep. But anyways, moving on, massive skill shortage. We don't have skills. All we do is, okay, certifications. And uh, no, maybe it will give you a paycheck, but I don't think so. Okay, you would help the world to really become secure. Uh, if we like our kids, grandkids, uh, the next generation, I don't think so. We are working for the next generation. All we are working for is present. Uh, because even even uh, the the people who uh, ask you to practice meditation say be in the present, right? <laughs> so that's a joke. So we are focusing on what we can do and how we can get paycheck. In that case, let's forget about the next generation because it 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 sounds like a double standard to me because if we are caring about someone okay we are not really working for it today and just for the paycheck i don't think so the there is there is some kind of uh, a gap in this we like our next generation but also we want only paycheck and certifications on this side i'm not saying that certifications are bad what i'm saying is Maybe they can help you to find a job, or maybe that they, it can help the company. Oh, we need a certified ethical hackers, or we need a, a offensive security certified professionals, OSCP. So only for that, okay, you may need, but also do it for your own integrity, not for anything else, because at the end of the day, or at the end of the life, okay, what you would ask is, did I do what I love doing? And did I really serve my customers well? Or was I happy in learning different things? And then we have very few white hat hackers uh, who think like black hat hackers. Now there are white, and there are black hat hackers. The white hat hackers are following the process. Now the black hat guys do not care about process. We say that, okay, we need to finish it in this sprint. Now you cannot finish something in a sprint while the black hat hackers are thinking that, well, I have unlimited time and I need not uh, impress anyone, just like my managers, my C-level management, or anything. So that's one advantage for black hat hackers. I know this because, okay, there was a transformation of myself from black hat hacking to the white hat hacking. So when I started, when I was uh, 16, I started the black hat, the kind of activities I used to do, uh, uh, no comments on them, but I transformed into a white hat hacker uh, for my own reasons. Functional testing bias. Okay, we just keep saying functional testing. I never understood why do you call non-functional testing for security and performance? 
it doesn't make sense. Stop using those words. Call it as security or just call it as testing. We are testing to add value to our customers and the users. Okay, that's those are the people who pay us. And we don't want to call this as non-functional. It doesn't make sense. Uh, fear of learning ethical hacking. Whenever you go to a security expert, they say, oh, well, it's difficult, right? They, they Because they don't want you to become them. They want to be experts. And anyone who would like you to learn would say, okay, you." I know there are challenges just like any other profession, but you can start off. Don't fear those fear mongers who exist in the industry. They would always come to you to bring you down because that, that's where I call everyone is a PhD holder. Pull him down and pull her down. That's a, that's a joke that I have. And scanners just don't suffice. We need hackers. If you are only thinking about scanners, okay, let me scan this, let me scan that. No. If you could stop everything from the scanners, just think about it. If black hat hacker, then why would we see the breaches in day-to-day -day life? If we are sure about, okay, we have done the scanning and we are done. Scanners are nothing but, okay, they do identify some things in the code or some things uh, which are common, but that's not what, I mean, that's not something that black hat hackers do. They go beyond it, it's, it's their explorers. They keep investigating, they get dig deeper, they are learners. And even though the kind of work they do, uh, the world may feel that, okay, that's bad, but they are really hard workers. They study and they have a great discipline as well. Now, comfort layer which says, okay, ha, I'm okay to do an average job. So you know it well, okay, we go to cafeteria and sit there and we just speak about, we just gossip. And well, if you like gossiping, that's good, but you only gossip, that's a bad thing, okay? It's, it's a killer for your own journey. Now forget about these things, okay, I'll go further. Uh, I can share the presentation as well with you guys if you want to look into this. But where I would like to show you is social engineering. No one focuses on this in the industry, manipulating the mind. So if I ask you this question, uh, when's your birthday? You would tell it to me. Well, rather than that, I can go to Facebook or your Twitter or anywhere. All I need to do is Google search. And then I come to you and I send an email to you. Your birthday is on so and so. Okay, we, are, we want to give you some coupons. Would you like to click on this link? You would. So that's, that's a beautiful thing about social engineering. And Kevin Mitnick, okay, who was, who is the greatest hacker as well? His hacks were very simple, the simplistic approach, I mean, but the damage was bigger. He could get into a different infrastructures, okay, he would, uh, I mean, it's social engineering. That's why I call this as, amygdala and oxytocin, so basically hacking your brain. Now there are different social engineering, shoulder surfing where someone does shoulder surfing or dumpster diving. Just go to your neighbor and uh, look into the trash can or the dustbin. You will find a lot of information about that person. And phishing, sending a phishing emails, like the example that I gave you now getting the birthday of someone and uh, understanding their interests, likes. And it's, it's, it's what uh, Cambridge Analytica did with the political campaigns as well. So uh, you may want to watch on Netflix. Uh, it's called as a great hack. 
So you can watch the whole Cambridge Analytica and how they really did something which is not good. And also it's called, the other one is wishing. So burnerapp.com, okay, people used to use this or maybe even uh, now it's used where you can spoof the phone numbers and then you can call someone and say, hey, uh, what do you think about that person, okay? And that person is you because you want to know what this guy who is acting as a friend towards friend to you reveals the information about yourself when you spoof the phone number and pose yourself as someone else and call them. So that's social engineering. Now, let me go back and let me start showing some demonstrations here. Before that, let me see, okay, how many attendees do we have? I'm not sure. Cool, we have 12 participants. Uh, it's actually attendees are 10, that's fine. So let's go. One of the attack where I start off with, let's say, okay, this is a bank account, right? So alter a mutual, this is a bank account. Now, what I would do here is first, I would like to tour a different links and say, okay, oh, what are these things? Okay, there's a login for the bank account and other things. Now, I would like to extract the information of the technology stack itself. So I use this add-on called as Vapalizer. Now this tells me Apache Tomcat 1.1. And there's a programming language is Java for this. So if you go to chrome.google.com, Chrome Web Store, download Vapalizer. There are many add-ons like this. You can even go to the code as well, view source and get a lot of different information. But what I use is, uh, right click and then view source and use the developer tools. Also, I use uh, plugins like this, Vapalizer, because they help me to get a quicker information. So let's do, let's test this search field here. Now this is a banking site, right? So I will type finance. Now let's see, okay, what we get on the screen. So you see that, okay, we have finance here. So no results were found for the query and it says finance. So that sounds good. Okay, there is nothing wrong with it. Now what I will do is use this character. You see this uh, less than symbol, which looks like a HTML tag. And now I hit the go button Surprise, okay, you don't see anything here. No results were found for the query. And I was expecting the less than symbol followed with the finance uh, keyword here because that's what we searched here. We searched this thing here. And it had to display this compared to what we entered first, which was finance. See here, so there is a difference. So what happened there? Okay, let's investigate that. Now, it did not show it anything because probably it's a less than symbol, the character. So let's go to developer tools. I would like to inspect, go to elements tab here. And here I would like to find command F on Windows, it's control F. What I would do is finance. Now this is the culprit here. Do you see this? Whatever we entered in the search, it did not show up here on the UI, but actually it's injected in the code. Why it's not executing here is because it's treating this as a HTML tag. And it's not a good HTML tag because we are not ending this with a greater than symbol, which is this one. 
So that's why we couldn't see it there, but the attack has already happened. To see this, let's confirm this. Let's execute. Uh, I don't want to enter my name, but let's try with finance. Now H1 tag means, okay, it will show up in a bigger text. So it's a HTML tag, which will make the text bigger, heading a one so you have h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 uh i think h5 so we can execute html here but if i go to the programmer and say hey look okay we can execute html the programmer may say you know what so what okay it, it looks good here right so that's why we call something as an exploit so we have to show the exploitation here. What hackers can do with this? So what I will do is input type equals to text. This is a HTML tag. Now let's say, okay, if we can create a HTML here, look at this. I created a input box here. So this is what happens, okay, if you can do a HTML injection on your application. Now, the programmer may still say, well, you are just creating an input type here. I mean, input field. I don't see anything bad here. So then what I would do is I would create my own JavaScript. In the best interest of time, okay, I have created this. So I'm just executing it. I created a login form. Isn't this interesting? Okay, how I created a login form on the page using a search feature because there was a HTML injection allowed. Now, what I would do next is, in my report, I will say, I'm going to copy this URL, whatever is in the address bar. And then the next step, what I will do is go to tinyurl.com. <laughs> And here, I'm gonna shorten it. <coughs> Once I shorten this, I'm going to find all the customers of Altura Mutual through social media and social engineering, asking my friends that, oh, are you a customer of Altura Mutual? They say yes. And I would say, okay, can you please share me your email address so that I can send something to you? And they say, sure, because they are your friends. And then after 30 days or like 15 days, because you don't want to send it right away because they will feel fishy about it. So you will wait and then send this link, the tiny URL, the shortened URL to your friends or all the different customers uh, and then you say, what you need to do is, okay, if you do not update your profile settings, your account will be blocked and you are injecting the anxiousness and then they feel this panic. And all they are going to do is click on the link and they come to this website and they say, oh, this is all sort of mutual, nothing wrong with this. No one is trying to hack me. And then they see this. Once they type in their username and password here and click on log login now, in the form action here, whatever I entered from search here in this JavaScript, I have given the address as the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash santoshtupa.com slash log this uh, credentials. So I get the username and password of all the different customers, who, whoever is trying to uh, use that link and come here and then trust this because it's alternative mutual and enter this and go. But this is fishy here, right? Search results and no results were found for the query. It's very simple. If you know a bit of JavaScript, what you can do is use this uh, code in the search field or add this in your tiny URL and send it. 
And what it's gonna do is uh, change this to query selector. So if I go and look into this text, okay, it's a H1 tag. And if I come back to filter and say H1, so there should be only one H1. So this, it says one of one. So I need not really uh, do the indexing here. So what I will do is H1. So I'll say inner text equals to, please log in here. So once I send this, now I'm just showing this in the console to demonstrate it to you. But when the attack happens, I'm sending it uh, in this URL itself. So I do this, it changes. Now one more thing is this text, no results were found for the query. We also, we want to remove this as well, it's a P tag. So it's the same thing. And now I would get a P tag. What I would say here is, let me be a bit sneaky. We care for your security. Now, once you do this, okay, this is what exploits are. So you send it and people trust this. If there was search results, people would be like, okay, there's something fishy here. And then they would stop or they would write to customer support. So this is the exploit for your character injection attack. And how did it happen? Any text fields. So how did we start from? Just by injecting, okay, if I want to just inject this one, image source, and go, look at that, I load the image from any website, from any external website. Now this is bad. Now how do you stop it? You stop it from encoding your input, encoding your output as well, the rendering as well, and escaping the dangerous characters. So that's one. So you saw the demo of how this can affect you. Now, let's go. I would like to show you something which is created by me. Some people may have already gone through this, but maybe this part, uh, you may have not seen. Let's see this. Now here, my challenge is once this loads up, tiny URL is going to my blog. Oops, what happened? It says SSL handshake failed. That's bad. We have it here. Okay, we got it. I think that there is some error with the tiny URL. So here the challenge is the password is testing and we have to find the username here, right? So how do we find the username? Now, Many people, so you can try doing this, but I'm going to steal all the fun here. Uh, many people will try, okay, let me do this. Okay, there is no limit to the number of attempts. Okay, you click on okay. Again, you type in here testing and then do something. So we'll keep doing this again and again. But one way to do it is automation as well. But before even going to automation, so people who are automators, they say, okay, I know how to automate. But if you don't have the knowledge of what is it, what's happening in this browser, okay, what is that character? Is there a character in the first place? So I click on login, there's no limit. But let's observe here. I'm not sure, okay, if you guys are observing. Look here, okay. So when I click on login, it's so quick, right? Which means there was no server side validation at all. So it looks like a JavaScript. So to confirm that, what I'm gonna do is 
go to inspect and then look into the network here network tab and then i'll enter something here and then testing and click on login you don't see any request in the network tab so that means there is no server side validation now you see how i'm trying to understand the behavior of this application or the code so if it's not doing a server side validation where should be this password or username it has to be in the client side code itself or somewhere in this machine so that's my so i narrowed it down by looking into the network tab and looking into the tab here so i click on ok uh, let me close this and say okay close it now let me go to view page source great so so also i have this comment line here oh you think that you could crack it from the source code just to demotivate people from looking into the source code but actually that's a trick so you see that okay we had a password called testing but we had to find the username now this is linked to the javascript because this comes under the script block here now let me try to see where is this being called control c this one control f control v oops buffer array copy and then here in the find paste so if i keep looking down here enter password so the name attributes has buffer array which means it's testing right so the buffer code if i come down you see it here which is username so if i scroll back this is the string which is the password so i copy this go back put it here paste it and then log in well this is a surprise it still says it's a wrong one so how do we find this information from this so maybe what it looks like it's not that it looks like a space we tried copying it but it's not that but it's still that character whatever we are seeing but it's not the same when we copy and paste because every web browser renders it in a different way uh, because everything has a different uh, web browser engine and it's always difficult different so how do we do this let me remove this because it's popping up and distracting me the facebook so i go here let me clear this now we will see the approach of mine so if i say document now what this does is okay it gives me the whole document whatever i see under elements or view page source that's what the document consists of and then there are different scripts here mitigator injector these are coming from my plugins here don't worry about them now now what i need is a script here in this body section because this is where we have this string and we have to narrow it down and dissect it one by one so that we can actually decipher whatever this character is in those uh, double quotes and in javascript okay you uh, double quotes or a single quote okay it can be a string so what i do now is i would extract only the script because what we have is in the script block so i do this and you also have a property called as length i want to see how many scripts are there six now there are five coming from my plugins and one from this document which is this uh form now if i do 
document script only. So if I expand this, you see there are different nodes here and JavaScript is a zero base indexing. Now, if I click on this, I think this is where our script is. And this index number is five. What I would do here is document.scripts, then five. All right, we got that script. Whatever we want to, I mean, the weird character here. And now what we want to do is split it by, so we want inner text so that we can copy it. So we have all this inner text here. Now, again, we want to go to this line of code. For that, we are going to use a split function and we want to split by new line character here. This is good. So there are 48 new lines. And if I expand this and every node, so if I keep scrolling, 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 look at that, the index number nine here, this is the character that we want. So we again go back, we chain the command and we call ninth index. So once we are here, what do we need to split on? We just need this character here in, in these brackets. So we say again, split. And now we want to split it by equals to sign. So now we have an array here. So there's a comma. So this is zero because it's a zero based indexing. And this is one, so we need one and we do one here, we got this. Now, what we need to do is, as this is a bigger, uh, it's, it's, it's a long uh, syntax, we'll put it in a variable, weird character, all right? So now if we type weird character, it holds this whole syntax here. Once we are here, we need, this is zero, one is the square brackets, and two is the double quotes, and three. So we need the third character. So what we do now is a weird character from, now uh, it's a car code. Now, this is a method in JavaScript, which can be used to get a Unicode value of any character. So we need the index number is three. Now this is 160 is the Unicode value. So if we go 160 Unicode character, now this would be amazing, right? So that's no break space. So this is the character that we want. So we go back again, and then what we can do again using a JavaScript is a string from character code, and that was 160, right? So we are convert converting it backwards. So we copy this, paste it here, and we say testing, enter. Look at that, smart tester, you got me. So you see, you saw that, okay, how we narrowed it down and how we were uh, using different tools. And the tools here were, it was JavaScript using your console. And some people use a Unicode identifier plugins and everything. But I find uh, a lot of fun in using these kind of tools like DOS commands, or it could be a black and white screen in your terminal. Uh, I, I also use a different tools, plugins, only after I understand the foundation of uh, how I can do it by myself rather than using the tool. Uh, once you understand this, okay, it's easier to go here and use any tool or develop your own tool. Now this was good. So now what we understand by this is, 
exploration, learning, going to the Mozilla developer network and just identifying what does this from character code do? Well, now this, this character are in the client side code, which means it's in my machine, I can touch it. So how do I want to touch it or what kind of tools I need to use to dissect it? And how should I get that weird character or uh, whatever uh, your mission is? Now let's speak about, so we learned two things, usage of tools and exploration and finding the treasure. And before this, we were on Alter Mutual where we saw uh, how HTML injection can affect people and how a hacker, uh, you being a white hat hacker and going to the programmers and saying, hey, look, okay, we have a HTML injection attack here. And the programmer says, okay, give me more information. And if you can really find out the exploit, like how I showed it to you, you record it and send the video to programmer and the programmer will be like, oh, this is really a bad one. We got to fix it very soon. So you can, uh, now many programmers say, okay, that's a low severity or something. There's nothing called a low severity problem in security because even the smallest thing can open the doors to bigger attacks. So think deeper, practice a lot. Now let's move on to one more attack called as, I did this, I think most of you may know this, website called as Inkmonk. I'm not sure okay, if you, have, you guys have already seen this. So let me let me try telling you what's happening here. So if you see on inkpunk.com, uh, this was done in April or something when I was in Istanbul, and I reported this security bug and they fixed it now, I guess, because I spoke to the founder, but don't try to use it. If it's not fixed, legally they got to fix it, and I think that it's been fixed. So I am cash balance. So you may have seen any e-commerce website or even, even banking websites and everything. So I have 1000 rupees here. So what I'm going to show here is how we can create our own money being a black hat hacker, but I'm not doing it now, but how black hat hackers would think. So it's 1000 now. So what I would do is I would go to account settings. And here I have an edit button. It opens up the form. Now don't be fooled by your user interface. That's what most of you testers do. Okay, just be on the UI and go to your test cases and write it. And that's why you feel that okay, your job is boring. It's not boring, okay? The way you are doing it is boring because the other folks are making it boring, look boring to you. Uh, it's just like influencing people. So now here you just see the four, one, two, three, and four. Four fields here. No, it's not actually four fields. Now let's see the magic. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open developer tools Let me open the developer tools. Open, okay, it's a long video. Okay, now, inspect element. I go to network tab. And under the network tab, when I'm there, I will click on submit button. Now, here is where the magic is. It's a put request. So, if I ask this question to many people, okay, how many kinds of request methods are there? I think you 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 will just say get method, post method, or put method. But 
and you are testing APIs. Uh, that's scary now, okay? If you just know just three or four HTTP methods and you don't know about how many methods exist uh, in the web world or the mobile world or anywhere where there is a web interface, I think I think you should not, you should say no to API testing them because you are doing uh, something wrong there because you are not really good enough to perform these tests. Now you may say that, okay, well, that gives me a paycheck, but you are not really doing a great work here. So you have, what do you have? Did you ever try to go to any documentation and read about these methods? What's the difference between post and put or what is get? What is head? What is post? What is put? Options, trace, patch, delete. No, well, you know delete, but did you know about patch? Did you know about connect? And why is connect required in the header? So anyways, you can go back and look into it if you are interested. So all I do here in the Firefox browser is edit and reset. Now here's the magic. Look at how many request parameters are there. And on the user interface, we just saw the four fields. But here, there is a lot of treasure. Look at this ID. Never use this sequential IDs in your application. Maybe I can try changing the profile of all the users starting from one, 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 and use an iteration in my program and keep applying my name or just say you are hacked. But that doesn't benefit me because my context was different here. So let's proceed. I don't want ID here, not interested in it. So I will proceed to the next JSON parameters in this request body. Let's go ahead. So cool. Let me forward this. Okay, you see that is blocked. Maybe I can block all the users where I make is block true because it's a Boolean value. And what I keep doing is I keep sending the same request body for all the IDs there, whatever we saw in the previous video. I mean, uh, previous parameter. So let's go ahead. Not interested this in this again. I keep going, I keep going, I keep going until I find some great meal. I go here, I go here, I go here. My email address. Now this is where I stop. You see this? cashback balance beautiful right now i can change it to anything look at how many zeros i added but to be on the safer side okay i don't want it to create more money than ink monk and ink monk would say okay how, how how come this person has more than our bank balance so that's fishy so i refresh this after submitting it because it's a put request is 200 now. Let me see okay, if the attack really worked or not. Okay, I'm really happy now, it's 2000 rupees. Now let me confirm by going to the cart. Look at this now, zero. I added something to the cart and I have to just pay zero rupees. And I can keep buying the products. I can become a Robin Hood for the poor people. I can keep buying products and sending it to some other address and they wouldn't even catch me, right? This is how black hat hackers think. Uh, they don't want to order it for themselves but give it to the other people. Uh, well, not everyone. There are people, okay, who would demand ransom from you. Now this is API testing. So how many times, okay, do you go to your Firefox and keep doing this attack? Just go to edit and recent and keep doing it. 
So uh, let's see one more. Let's go back to our slides to see what else do we do wrong? Where can you start from? It's all social engineering and being curious to see. It's not difficult. It's challenging. So no job is difficult. If it's difficult, probably you don't like it. And well, every, every profession had challenges. So uh, I call them as challenges rather than calling it's easy or difficult. So it's not about easy. Some people say, oh, well, it's easy job. No, it's actually you see it as easy because you're not doing a good job. You don't see challenges. So anyway, so let's go uh, ahead. I would like to show you something. Now, you speak about speak tools. Go to this. There are many tools. Okay, It's not about tools. It's about the mindset. I keep repeating this. I've been doing this for the last 10 years, and it has been difficult. And sometimes it makes me feel so exhausted. It's about practicing the different patterns in your brain, seeing details, seeing, it, I mean, seeing tiny details, seeing why is it put request, why is it get, what's happening, how many requests are coming in the network tab. Uh, can I tamper with this? Can I click on edit and resend and uh, go to this uh, HTTP method and replace post with delete? Can I delete my own profile even though the application doesn't give me the feature of deleting my own account? So there are many things that you can drill down. Now look at this. These are tools for social engineering. Now OSINT means open source intelligence so gathering the information before you are performing an attack and uh, so many people go on stack overflow and ask a question so if you are working for a company x and then you go to stack overflow and are asking some question i know that okay you are working on this firewall in your company how will i get to know after I go to your Stack Overflow, look at the question, I will go to your LinkedIn profile. Once I go to your LinkedIn profile, I get to know you are working in this company and your question is coming from that company. How, why would you go to Stack Overflow most of the times? You found a problem in your work and then you go. So that's, that's how we create a web and connect this web. And then you start getting the answers. And look into this, there are many tools for OSINT. You can go identify what are the interests of people, how to find the phone numbers, search engines, video cameras, which are open, the ports are open, email addresses, great. Speaking about email addresses, okay, I, I would like to show you something. Uh, let's go to hunter.io. <laughs> so we are on this website. So what you've got to do here is, it's simple. All you need to do, enter is, now let's try doing a test type.com itself. I entered the test type. I want to know the email address of test type. Look at that. Interesting, right? How to get uh, the email addresses of the test tribe, whoever is on the test tribe. I never knew Paris uh, was on the test tribe email account. Now I know he holds an email account, Paras Pundir, I guess. Okay, who's a community guy, amazing guy. And contact, and Mahesh. We all know Mahesh, the famous guy. So you can go ahead and do this kind of thing. Just sign in, free plan, enter any domain here and it will show you. And sometimes uh, this is a bit uh, uh, crazy, but I'll show you what's the funny thing here. Let me log out. <laughs> 
let's say I would like to get the testinsane.com, which was my previous company. I don't do business on that now. Right here. Now there is some characters here behind this and they're replacing everything when I select it by A and A and that's when they blur. Now there is one more email address here, right? So what I do here, even though they have replaced it with A and they're blurring it out, I go on Google search, enter this. Okay, this is not good. Now let's go back to the hunter and then do this one here. One is you can do a guesswork. I go here. Look at that. Did you mean thanks to Google? Google helps always, right? So even if you copy it and do something because Google holds a lot of different data of all of our people. Uh, well, that's a different subject. So sales at the rate testinsend.com. See how easy it is, even if it's a trial version, okay, even if you're not logging in. And you get the format. So you can try it for anything. And let's say, okay, there are how many subdomains exist on your company name. What I do always, and all I'm doing here is gathering the intelligence information i go here and we don't even know uh, uh, how many companies have subdomains if you if i ask the same question to you how many subdomains are on your server and then you will be like oh well three five seven but can you exactly tell me how many of how many are there even on the web and how hackers can even look into this information. So let, let me try showing this. You can try it with your own domain name or anything. The test type.com. I search. Look at that here. Now this subdomain names. The test away, I cannot find it anywhere, but I can find it from the securitytrails.com, enter the domain name, you get all the historical data. I get even the web panel and the C panel as well, uh, where you can log into your hosting. Mail, which means, okay, there's a web mail, and there's a web mail as well. And I can also tell you, okay, where this hosting, who is the hosting provider? <coughs> and also you can look into the DNS records. So if you look in the MX records, uh, these are mail exchange records. I don't think so, okay. The test type is using Google services for this because it's using a soft layer. So now you see how you connect the different webs and then you start thinking about different test ideas. It's not just sitting in front of your screen and saying, okay, I'm seeing here, I'm bored now. So that's why whenever you go back home, okay, you feel that uh, you don't feel have a sense of accomplishment. Many other things keep bombarding you in your head because you're not excited. So that's security trails. Uh, let me see, okay, looks like there's something here. Maybe someone is asking me to stop. Great. What is raw and unencoded data? Raw is, okay, let me take questions for a while, okay. Then I will start speaking about the other thing. We can see uh, what is drawn or unencoded data. I really do not understand this question. Ra, can you give me an example, Dhanalakshmi? What I'm trying to say is raw is something raw. Unencoded means it's raw still. 
All right. Okay, Vinay Pandey, very interesting. Please let us know how can I, how I can learn all this? That's a good question. Okay, why, how about watching the criminal movies on Netflix or YouTube? Okay, I watch Border Security. So let me type it on YouTube. I watch uh, Scorpion, which is a series, and I watch hacking movies, okay? If you search for top 10 hacking movies, okay, you'll find it. And then I like watching Money Heist, okay? So you, can, you start getting ideas, okay? Just like breaking into physical infrastructure. And you can start talking to people, try, social engineering your friends. Try watching the videos. You have to start from documentation as well, understanding how the web works. If you don't, how can you learn about all these things? There is no one silver bullet, okay? You can learn about the OWASP top 10 attacks, but also what you can do is the starting point can be OWASP. Open web, open web Application Security Project. So if you are able to see my screen, go to this and start following every cheat sheet series. I also, uh, I mean, uh, I have contributed uh, securing the CSS files here. Look at this, okay, you have all the cheat sheets here. Start looking into them and practice. And you can practice on many other sites like OWASP, WebGoat, or Juice Shop as well. There are many sites. It's not about practicing there. It's about how much, how many hours do you spend every day? Ask this question to yourself. If you are asking me this question, how can I learn all this? Can you spend three hours every day, even after coming from office? If your answer is yes, then I think you know the answer then. And there's a lot of information around you. So unencoded data is uh, unencoded. I don't understand what is raw, raw is raw, okay? If, if you see whatever you are sending, it's raw data. If it's unencoded, which that also means a raw data. Encoded means, okay, you are doing a base 64 encoding or using MD1, MD3, MD5 hashing. That's the thing. So uh, my issue there. Yeah. Hello. yeah. All right. Uh, so I think we have done one hour. I would like to see more questions here. While I also uh, like to speak about, I will share the presentation. It's an 80 slide presentation where you also have, let me try to find that information for you when I, where I've spoken about so in plain text, there is a password story as well. We always do it wrong. If you say that eight characters minimum, one special character, one lowercase, one uppercase. So what I would do is India at the rate one, two, three. It has eight characters. It has an uppercase. It has a lowercase. It has the at the rate symbol. Is it a strong password? No, it's not. But that's what we do in our applications because and you can look into this presentation I'm, you can download it from my site i'll tell you where you can download it from okay now is this a safe password no it's not so there is no secure password as of now today so there are some mathematical computations in terms of uh how much time does it take md5 if you are using md5 just kick it out it's not going to help. S script is good, 
Bcrypt is good as well. So there are the slow algorithms for a reason because it will stop hackers from dehashing. There's no concept called dehashing. It's a long string and they have to get a password out of it. Now let's go. Uh, there are different mutations. Now uh, this was a funny thing. Never use cat's name as a password, but I don't care. It's a great name for the pet. Between, do you have a dictionary for this? So someone asked this question uh, in one of the blog posts and the response was, well, we have added it, change your password. So do not reveal your mutations, your secrets. Dictionary attack, okay. Uh, this is a tool that people can use uh, for uh, getting the hashes, I mean, uh, getting the passwords out of hashes. Uh, in this slide, there are many things. All right. I'm just trying to get whatever you ask for, how you can learn. Well, you can learn from this presentation itself whenever these are like 80 slides. Okay, you can see, go to these websites and go to this website. I have the practice sites as well. Like you have at least 50 of them. And OWASP is one. Start from somewhere, Chrome, your plugin. Okay. So I think uh, I will be sharing this presentation with you guys, uh, this one, whatever you are seeing on the screen now. But go to these cheat sheets. For instance, how many times do you go to your cookie values? If I go, let, just let me know, okay, if you have ever done this. You just say, okay, we have cookies, right? And you are very much, comfortable with them. But were you curious to understand what's inside the cookie? No one. So if I go, did you even go to application here and see, okay, what are the cookies? Now don't tell me that, okay, well, I do go to this tab called as application and look into the cookie values because this was a requirement in my company if you are saying it was your learning was through a requirement in a company, it's not your learning. I'm not really excited about it. So what are those things where you learned on your own ex by exploration? So here we have cookie values, right? So let me dock it to bottom. Uh, bottom, bottom, bottoms, okay. So we have this J session ID and auto accounts. Oh, well, it's secure because I see something like mumbo jumbo and I don't understand what it is, but it's secure. This is what we see. Once we start seeing, the programmer is trying to show that it's secure and we always buy whatever the programmer wants uh, us to see. He wants us to see six. Of course, we'll see six while it's nine, actually. Uh, what I would do here is extract the same thing here. Cookie. So we have this cookie here. And here, how many cookies do we have? All total accounts. This is only one. So to confirm that, I would just use a length property. Okay, it's it's getting somewhere else. Document.cookie, I want to split it by, again, do split by equals two. Great, I got this. Now I want one, the first one. So I go here, one, first index. I got this. Now what do I do with this? So if I go do B to A, 
uh, let me store this in bar cookie value. So if I do a cookie value here, it's gonna display this. So B2A is a method, it's a function actually. So where you can, uh, this one is, I think let's try A to B, bit of confusion here. Now A to B also doesn't, it's actually B to A. But what's happening here is we need only until here. It's also considering the other value. So let's take this B to A, paste this off. Nope, it doesn't work. So what this is trying to do here is see if I can try doing decoding here from the cookie values. So this is the cookie value. Or maybe this still works because equals to equals to, based on my experience is a base 64. So you can use the online decoders as well, but what I use is just the dev tools. Put it here. Look at this. We still did not get anything. The reason we did not get is maybe there is something else that we need to get. Look at this. It's actually A to B. That's how we decode. When you say B to A, actually encode. These are the functions in, uh, it's a JavaScript function. Now we see that, okay, you got your credit card number here. Interesting checking account, how many. So what these guys are doing is they're taking all this, the programmer is taking this and converting it to a base 64, which is bad. Maybe your application programmers are also doing this, but you never did it because your application here showed you something else. Oh, this is encrypted because this looks crazy. So yeah, so start using different things. How do you learn it? It's around you. Why don't you start from your application asking questions to people? Are you doing SQL injection really well, the query parameterization? Are you doing encoding? We don't speak to the programmers at all, do we? We just go to meetings, stand up meeting, everyone stand up. Okay. Uh, my frustration has to be in a different session altogether. So I'm gonna stop here. So Mahesh, you can intervene and uh, tell me, okay, what do we do next? I think we can start taking the questions I have posted on uh, Facebook as well. Uh, test type. Yeah, so I'm copying the questions uh, for you in the chat session only. You, you should be able okay. to see. Yeah. Cool. All righty. Facebook.com. Oh, you're pasting it here. Yeah, on the Zoom chat. Oh, okay. Cool. Sorry. Now, did you know about this thing? Okay, on the Facebook.com. Let me close it. Uh, let me open the incognito. Can you see incognito? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I think is, okay, this is the guy I hate. Look at the spy here. You are, you are incognito. Makes me feel scary. Now, have you ever gone to Facebook console? If you go to console, it says stop here. Now the reason it says stop is, okay, people can hack using the console itself. Someone will uh, tell you, can you go and open this console and paste the JavaScript here and hit enter. Once you hit enter, 
you are attacked you are being attacked uh i'll i'll show you the demonstration in the last just to leave you uh with a different kind of attack but let's take questions uh, great uh, let me scroll up scroll up scroll up scroll up on facebook ask does our registry plays any role preventing attacks i do not understand that questions what do you mean by registry i'm going to the next one i'm not security tester but we got user story for testing cross site scripting vulnerability i want to write test scenarios what all scenarios we can derive for test box i understand my question may not be very specific due to limited knowledge i think so you you should stop writing the test scenarios here because you one has to learn javascript here not write test scenarios once you have that knowledge what i do is i go to naughty strings simple github i go to naughty strings and there are many so if i go to here i take this i put it in my automation and then it runs and then i look into the results so if i go down here look at this there are so many cross site scripting attacks you cannot even write about write all these things because there's so many keep going keep going look at this they're already done what you can do is learn how your programmer is writing javascript not write test scenarios if your manager is someone telling you it just means that okay your manager doesn't understand it and asking you to do something that's ugly so that's my answer to that okay there are many payloads this we call them as payload you can call it as test data as well it's just take it and run it stop writing your test scenarios what you will end up doing is only write okay script alert document dot cookie that's what you are going to end up with explore the web you will get a lot of things explore stack overflow talk to your programmer saying are you doing input encoding and output encoding really well if that person is really doing it very well you need not be i mean that's a mitigation that's a first step a question but if you are shy speaking to a programmer then you got a bigger problem so i would go to the next one from ajay ajay i think okay we got to speak okay on the on a different call on this yeah but anyways what can be the worst here if we constantly keep testing with this mindset uh oh was it a question what can be the worst here if we constantly keep testing yeah exactly we can do well uh if uh, i would use it as a quote uh i hope i understood it really well so uh, hold on guys okay don't keep bombarding i need to read the other things as well hi santosh i am your big fan how to get into security testing as security domain is huge every domain is huge nawaz and thanks to you for retweeting and uh, liking all my posts on linkedin uh, i i remember you very well uh, whenever i see you, okay there is a notifications i think that okay it's nawaz who is retweeting thank you and how to get into security testing it's not a domain because black hat hackers they did not have 
anyone to teach them. It was a curiosity. After reading every blog post, uh, would you go and look into different things? Okay, what's happening here? Can I try doing this in my application? Are we doing it right? How many programmers are we speaking to? It's all around you. There is no entry barrier to anything as long as you want to learn. I don't know where to start, begin, any pointers. Well, starting OWASP, documentation, reading the hack stories on Reddit. Uh, these are in my presentation, which I'll be sharing in the end. Uh, Mahesh will be sharing with all of you. Uh, and pointers, movies, like I told you about when I was answering Vinay. And, and not, and also saying, oh, it cannot happen. When people tell me, oh, it cannot happen, and I'm like, really? Also questioning anything and everything. Why it cannot happen? If the manager comes to us and says, oh, well, it's not a bigger severity, then what I would tell him is, well, you know what? I would rephrase it as, you cannot see it, but maybe if we spend more time, maybe the black hat hacker can see it beyond what you are trying to see. And you cannot see it as severe, but uh, we have to think about it. And if it's something, even if we don't severity, but we can fix it, go ahead and fix it because we don't know the unknowns. Let's close the doors. If the door is open, let's close it rather than Rather than spending uh, like many hours on fighting for, okay, should we fix it or not? Just directly speak to the programmer, fix it in a few minutes and you are done. The tiny loopholes, I mean. I, uh, Nawaz, I think that's, that should help where you got to start from. If you need anything, okay, just ping on Twitter, tweet. It is important to learn JavaScript to be a security tester. No, it's not. Is it important for a human being to eat uh, only these kind of foods? No, it's not. It's a context. So what I would like to say is it's not about JavaScript. It depends on what context, how do you understand? If you ask me to learn Python tomorrow because of the context, I can learn it. The reason I can learn it is, okay, because I have got the foundation of it. And today you ask me to learn anything, okay, I can learn it. Just give me some time and I would do it. So it's, it's not important. If you are working with mobile apps or web applications or internet of things, wherever there's a web connections and there is a, there are JavaScript frameworks, well, JavaScript, learning JavaScript can help you because that's where the code has been written for your front end. Nowadays, you can use a Node.js, uh, Node.js to, do the client and server side as well. So it can help you based on the context. And it can, well, I started learning JavaScript not to learn security testing because it's fascinating. I did not learn to hack because I wanted to do this or that because it felt great inside me. I learned testing not because well, I needed some job. I did it because I felt that you cannot explain it. Okay, it's 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 a inner guidance. Okay, you feel it deeper, and I cannot explain it. So go ahead and learn for yourself because when you are in your seventies or sixties. And uh, you are asking this question to yourself, oh, did I do it well? Oh, you wouldn't say that, okay, I learned this because I got a huge paycheck. You would say, I learned this thing because it made me feel good. 
that's a way to live, at least to me. So Noah she says, sure. The test I Arjun BM on Facebook asks, what are the other common add-ons for social engineering? Let us know if any other. Uh, I think I already answered this, uh, Arjun. OSINTframework.com, you got everything there. It's a mind map. You just go there and OSINTframework.com. In my presentation, you can find it. Uh, let's not only have the tools, tools, tools thing. You can explore them. Let's have different kind of questions. My question is slightly broader, probably a bit philosophical. Okay, I'll, I love philosophy, but also science as well. What is your take on zero trust security? It's a zero trust security or zero base security? Would security continue to be an illusion? Industry continues to churn new terminologies. All right, got it. Now, zero trust. I, I don't know about zero trust security. What do you, what do they mean? If you can help me with that. So, uh, would security continue to be an illusion? Uh, well, uh, philosophical. Uh, maybe I'll get into philosophy now. Uh, I think everything is an illusion if I have to get to that level, like be a spiritual thinker. But let me speak in a scientific way. Many people say, okay, we have done all these security requirements and we are good with it. And we are safe. SSL is an illusion. SSL stops you only from man in the middle attacks. Not anything else, not cross site scripting, not cross site request forgery, no click check, I mean, the click checking attacks or the UI redressing attacks. It doesn't stop. And some people uh, would still continue to fall into the trap and they would always start crying like a baby when the breaches happen. So why don't you build a security team in your organization? Have you ever asked this question to your managers? Do we have security requirements? Are we doing authentication really well? Are we doing the query parameterization really well? Uh, 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 let's, let's leave the model aside. Uh, there are many models. And every model has a flaw. It's whatever suits in your context. Uh, let me read it well. And uh, terminologies, how does it matter? Tomorrow for biryani, I may call Santosh. Well, don't eat me, but it's just a word, okay? Do you understand the concept? And does everyone have in your team have the shared understanding of what do you mean when you use this word? That's the thing. We cannot fight over the semantics and syntax of the grammar or our terminologies. Uh, industry will always do it. It's just like the agile. Okay, are you some certified trainer? Who needed it? No one. If you did your job really well, if people communicated with each other, if you were a learner, I don't think so. You need anything to do the job right. Zero trust is a security model based on the principle of maintaining state tax. Uh, just doing your access control right and having your network penetration testing well to me. Uh, no models or anything. I don't follow any model. I'm the technical, technicless guy. Uh, many people hate me for being this, but I love being it because it's freedom. You don't have, you are not restricted by anything. And that's when I save my clients. 
and there have been situations where my clients were like okay we need you okay even though you are on a holiday come back and be on this project because i'm unconventional conventional is boring yeah cool next question please if none mahesh i would like you to come back on the call here and if there are sub questions please do ask i will speak until six o'clock six p.m on my watch which should be 8 30 on your watch <coughs> Any other questions? Were you able to hear me? Mm, yeah. I'm just checking if we have any unanswered question on Facebook. And one more thing is, okay, you can visit uh, visit me at walktocode.com slash blog. I write security blog posts there and other things as well. The tiny things. Yeah, so there is a question by Ali around same topic. Uh, he's okay. asking if you have any YouTube channel or any repository which you maintain. Uh, YouTube channel. Oh, uh, I have started it. Uh, all you can do is, okay, you can subscribe to Santosh Tupad. Uh, I'll just share the link here. So if you go to YouTube, I have started it. I've started it. Okay. So there are some videos which are not really good. They're crappy, but you can watch them if you want. Basically, they are the full disclosures of whatever hacks I did without audio. Okay, so today we released uh, uh, with Rajesh Mathur, I think this one, this video. So this is the one. So go here. So this is something that I'm trying to do and also create different videos as well on different subjects. Let's say, okay, we pick robots.txt file what does it do and how does it connect to the security so just a five minutes videos or 10 minutes on the same topic rather than switching to different topics so i think this is the channel i have got very few subscribers but with your help i can get more help me so you can just search for this link or else i'll send it to send this link to Mahesh. I think it's already on uh, test type group. Yeah. So you can subscribe and you keep getting every week uh, notifications if you want to receive. Yeah, that's the answer. Thanks, Oli. Perfect. So I don't see any new question on both the channels. Okay. Guys, last 20 seconds probably, if you have anything. I can wait for our next one minute to two minutes. Ask anything that you have, whatever you are feeling. Practice, practice, practice. All right. Uh, can you, okay, that's a link. Any plans to write book? Yes, uh, it should be published before November. A tiny book, like 100 pages before November. Use Kali Linux for testing. I use the different tools. Kali Linux, okay, may have a lot of different tools from the GitHub. 
So it's not necessarily uh, coming from Kali Linux is a big tool or something. It's the idea when I, you cannot really, even though you have a great tool scanners, but if you don't have an idea, you cannot fight black hat hackers. It takes a great amount of practice exploits. Kali Linux, there is a Kali Linux, which is called, call, which was called as a backtrack Linux. Okay, there are different tools, Rapid7. Uh, there are many, but don't get intimidated by all these tools. First thing is, can you think hacking? That's how I learned hacking. I used to steal from the shops. I used to steal chocolates. That's when whenever someone was a thief, okay, they are my best friends. You can join the community here. Okay, uh, Vinay, you can join the community there. Please do, and you will receive a lot of good information. The group is really doing well, and they are active always in India. They will also get global soon, hopeful. <coughs> So in this channel, okay, I have some some videos as well. If you wanted to go ahead and look into the different videos, I uh, I was the guy who hacked the U test as well. So you can look into my play playlist as well. So U test hacked. So you can just watch. It's the same thing again with the developer tools where I hacked the admin of uh, U test or app laws. Now it's called as app laws. They just sent me one t-shirt, even though I hacked the admin. That was bad. Just one t-shirt, the package looked bigger, the content was smaller. You look here, so there are different, I log in as an admin for UTES. Look at this, okay, I had the payments and everything. You can look at this, look at this video. I could, I could transfer all the payments to me every month. I report it because my, those are my ethics and principles. Okay. Madhu on Facebook asks, waiting to hear about the Facebook console. Okay, cool. Oh, thanks Madhu for reminding me about this. Okay, now I'll show it to you. So let me minimize this, come back here. Now I created my own plugin. Now let's not speak about the plugin now. Let me go to Chrome extensions. Then I will load the unpacked version of my plugin. It's called as a Chrome security checker or the tester plugin. So once I do this, there is a test man here. I can send this plugin to all of you if you want to use this plugin in your security testing. So I go here. Okay, coming back to what Facebook said. So Facebook said, all right, let me go to Facebook. If I go to console, when I go to console, when anyone opens this, okay, it says stop, right? If I go to console, or maybe it did not say it, damn it, even, even it's not really working well, or maybe it's, it's loading still. So it says stop, do not execute anything, or maybe you are hacked because someone is asking you to copy and paste some JavaScript, look at this. You can try it on your, this thing as well. Now I will show why this one, why every application has to put this in the console log through the JavaScript. 
Now, let's say I'm on the login. Let's assume that this is a bank. I enter Madhu and I'll enter some password at the rate one, two, three. I like this at the rate one, two, three. Most of you have the password ending with a number and it's not more than nine characters. Uh, I know that, okay, you are nodding. Yeah, it's true. But let me go to inspect. Do you see anything wrong here on the UI? Nothing is wrong, right? Everything is cool. But if I go to inspect console, now, <coughs> what has happened is, the attack has already happened. I enter the password. I say M. You see it here? M A D H U at the rate one, two, three. It has been sending that all these characters. So if I say A, look at this A. It's a key logger. Look at this. I enter whatever in the text fields, in the search box, or anywhere. It's being sent to 127, which is a local host. It's not configured, that's why it's saying error connection refuse. But if I make this local host as santoshtupad.com, I will receive all whatever you are entering in your whole browser because I have infected your browser with this plugin called as testman. I told you that I'm going to send this plugin to you, you can use in your security testing. Uh, no, I'm not going to send it because if I had sent it, you would trust me, you would install the plugin and all your keystrokes would come to me. So these are the attacks. That's why Facebook says, okay, do not execute any script here. But also it cannot stop you if you have installed some plugin. What I will do is, hey, Madhu, uh, I understand that, okay, you are a vegan fan. You like eating vegan. And then you are like, yeah. And because I got to know that from your Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram or any such social media. And once you like it because you're passionate about eating vegan, what I'm trying to do here is social engineering. Once you do that, you will click on the link. It gets installed here. And I'll put some veg vegetables here as an icon. And you say, oh, oh wow, it's, it's a vegan icon. When you mouse over, it says vegan 1.0. Uh, we will send you some coupons. First, I will send you an email, phishing email. You click on the link. It comes here and says, you mouse over. It says, we are working on the coupons. Maybe in one week, we'll send it to you. No, actually, this plugin is working on your credentials and whatever keys you are typing in there. So that's why it starts even from the console. How to stop this? You have uh, something called as form action under, so what you do is you set it to self. This is a whitelisting which comes under content security policy. I'm just typing it here. Yeah. So just go to Mozilla Developer Network. And this plugin, if you go to airport or hotels, the business hotels, okay, you go there, you can just install this plugin and anyone who logs in, that's why I do not use business computers or the airport computers, free internet, well, free you will get to know only after a few days, whether it was free or something else. So go to here, developer network and check for HTTP headers. You will get read about every HTTP header here and see how HTTP headers can impact your testing and how we can find the bugs in the HTTP headers. You can go 
dig deeper. Okay. Uh, let me see. Okay, if you have many other any other questions here. Uh, Madhu on Facebook are waiting to hear about the Facebook console. I think okay. Deep uh, does our registry play any role preventing attacks? Mm. Okay, for now, are you speaking about the web, mobile, or the registry of your desktop applications? <coughs> no, it doesn't stop anything. Uh, antivirus can, but if you see the other video on my YouTube, which I, uh, no, it doesn't stop anything. It, those are the policies for the employees where you stop something, but you can even bypass the policies if you understand the Windows uh, programming or the hooks as well. So the registry entries may act like a restriction or a firewall, but you can bypass them. For instance, the, the key logger that I showed you just before a few seconds, it cannot be stopped from antivirus, but I'm seeing all your credentials, wherever you're logging in, be it your banks or be it your uh, hospitals or anything. So you have to build a security inside your application, not rely on external things like antivirus. You can rely on them. It's a plan B. All these registry entries or anything, they are plan Bs. Did you do enough security for your application is the question. Balaji asked, where would we get the PPD from? That's a good question. So uh, you would get it right away. Cool, let me try. Okay, let me pause, stop sharing for a while and let me get the link there. Stop sharing, stop sharing. Uh, can I upload this and then share it with you? Uh, Mahesh, what I'll do is I will upload this on my website and I'll give you the link and then people can just visit this link uh, and then they can download. And if you are not on the test type group, okay, go there, like it so that you can see the link, which will be uh, posted in the next 15 minutes after this call. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would do. Cool. So I think that's pretty much all the questions side. Great. So thank you, Santosh, a lot. I think this was uh, one of the most interesting session I have personally attended. Cool. It was hands on. I was yeah. also scared when you were doing stuff around the desktop.com. Well, not deeper. Yeah. I will stop. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I deeper, deeper we can always go offline and I can yeah. get help from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't hack my brother's website. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks a and, lot. And uh, yeah, thanks. I think that's pretty much on the question side. So thank you all the participants, both on Zoom and Facebook. Thank you for being here. And wish you all a lovely Saturday evening. And Great. wish you a wonderful day, Santos. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. And get on Twitter, get on talk to people. Get on Twitter. You can reach me faster than anywhere else. Done. Thank you. Cheers. Yes. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Saurabh. Thanks, Shihari. Thanks, Arjun. Thanks, Monil. Uh, thank you, Vinay. Thank you, John. Everyone. Bye.